There is a world shortage in microchips and semiconductors. Car manufacturers halting production due to lack of chips and are expected to lose $60 billion in 2020 due to lost car sales. Microchips are everywhere. Microchip sales are expected to grow 8.4% in 2021. And microchip stocks are going to rocket to the moon. You are here to find out how you can take advantage of it. But hold it one second. Are we in a huge microchip bubble? Don't believe me? Settle down, grab a cup of coffee and join me and my pup for a quick analysis of the situation. We are going to look into the reasons that brought us here, examine the long-term trends and take a brief look of six microchips related stocks and throw in one ETF for the passive investors. And in the end, you will tell me, are we in a microchip bubble or not? Disclaimer, as always, this is not a financial advice and you should not listen to YouTubers. Now we can proceed. Let's start with the long-term trends. Microchips are everywhere in your fridge, washing machine, TV, in your car, computer, phone, in traffic lights, power grids, water grids, in aviation, railways, ships, in the army, in data centers, in medical equipment, in hospitals. If we shut down all microchips in the world, the world economy and society structure will simply collapse. But for this growing demand, the industry was prepared and ready to take advantage of. 5G, smart cars, more phones, all of these were taken into account by the big players in this market. But then came 2020 with the sickness situation that caused some parallel processes. Logistic problems, factories shutting down, raw materials not making it to producers and supply chains disrupted. At the same time, manufacturers, especially in the car industry, cut down their production and immediately the chip order for their cars, besides Toyota, which stockpiled in an insightful forward thinking. At the same time, demand surged for work-from-home products such as computers and accessories, which the delivery surged by 13% in 2020. Tablets, phones, data centers and network equipment all were selling like hot bands. Also, people were not going out and demand for smart TVs, game consoles and other entertainment-related electronics increased. All of these processes created a shortage in microchips once the economy started to rebound and car manufacturers ramped up production to find out that scaling chip production back up is much slower than scaling down. Now that we got everything sorted out, let's see if we can take some profit from microchip stocks or if the market is in a bubble. Microchip companies can be divided into four types. Foundries such as TCMC and Samsung, these companies produce the chips for other companies which design them. Fabless companies such as Qualcomm and Broadcom which design and sell the chips and use foundries for production. Integrated companies such as Intel and Texas Instruments which design and produce by themselves. And supportive companies such as Teradyne and Lam Research Lab which produce and design equipment and tools that are used in microchip production process itself. Well, we said there is a shortage in microchips so for sure producers aka foundries will benefit. Let's check Taiwan Semiconductors Manufacturer Company, one of the world's largest dedicated foundries with a yearly revenue of $45 billion. Even Intel itself considers moving some of its production to TCMC. On the upside, there's a surge in demand for microchip production and TCMC heavily invests in production infrastructures which will position them well for the increasing demand. Hey, you even get a 1.4 dividend yield. On the downside, there is the geopolitical situation with China that might affect them and also China is moving to 70% in-house production by 2025. Also, Biden administration is looking to moving into production in the United States. So all of this might affect their business. Let's check the value. With a current price of 122, PE of 34, compared to historical median PE of 16.4, if we use a price to earning growth model valuation, we get a fair value of $61. But how come analysts give it much higher valuations? Well, they're using a PE of 33. Check this Morningstar analyst, which one year ago gave the company a fair value of $46. Today it's giving over three times higher valuations. Come on guys, did the company triple its revenue in the last year? Okay, so it looked like this train already left the station. Let's check fabulous companies. Hey, what about Broadcom? You even get a 3% dividend yield. Sounds good? Well, let's see. Price to earning of 56. Mm, payout ratio of 130% to 232% since 2019 meaning they are taking debt to pay dividends. Hell, they increased their debt by $23 billion since 2018. That doesn't pass my radar. Okay, so let's try Qualcomm, the Snapdragon processor designer. On the upside, with a surge in demand for 5G phones, automotives and Internet of Things, Qualcomm just have the right products to benefit from the situation. They're also enjoying a royalty income from patents they have on 3G and 4G. 
On the downside, again, the China factor, which is a big customer for their products. They're also exposed to the shortage by themselves, as they don't produce by themselves and competing for fab resources. Looking at valuation, the current price is $138, with a PE of 24, compared to a historical median of 19.6. If we run a price-to-earning growth model value, we get a value of $104, and a discounted cash flow model will give us a value of 107 You even enjoy a 1.9% dividend yield. Well, maybe it's not so bubbly, but definitely overpriced. Let's try the integrated companies, those which do both, design and produce, starting with Intel. On the upside, they have fabs, and the new CEO is going to offer fab services to designers. They are a US-based company, and the Biden in-house trend might benefit them. They invest $20 billion to build two fabs in California that will increase their production capabilities. Also, demand for PCs and server farm is surging, and this is one of Intel's main revenue streams. On the downside, 10 nanometer production setback wasn't in their favor and allowed AMD and other competitors to gain on Intel expense. Apple is going into its own processor design in new MacBooks, and ARM-based CPUs are competing in the server market, especially after Nvidia buying ARM. If we look at valuation, the current price is $65, and the current PE is 14, just like the historical median. If we run a price-to-earning growth model, we get a value of $47, and if we run a discounted cash flow model, the value is $61. Perhaps a little bit overvalued, but there might be some juice left in it. If not, at least you will get a 2.15% dividend yield. Well, let's try Texas Instruments, the world's largest analog chip maker. On the upside, they are a producer, with their 3 nanometer wafer fab lens are on track to support increased production capabilities, they are well positioned. On the downside, again, high exposure to the Chinese market. Regarding valuation, the current price is $194, with a price to earning of $33 compared to a historical median of $23.6. If we run a price to earning growth model, we get a value of $123, and a discounted cash flow model will give us a value of $130. Well, it is way overvalued, but at least you get a dividend yield of 2% if you care for that. Well, let's try something else, try a different approach and check what is going on with supporting companies, starting with LAM Research Lab, a major vendor of semiconductor fabrication tools used in the biggest fabs companies such as TCMC. On the upside, wafer fabs are expected to spend 60 to 70 billion dollars on equipment in the next two years. LAM Research Labs are expected to see a 40% revenue growth in 2021. On the downside, equipment orders are cyclical and only five chip makers are account for 70% of equipment spending. Looking at valuation, current price is $652 with a price earning ratio of 33 compared to a historical median of 21. If we run a price earning growth model, we get a value of $428, or if we run a discounted cash flow model, we get a fair value of $400. It looked like this one wasn't able to fly under the radar and caught investor attention, and so it is overpriced. Let's try Teradyne. Teradyne develops, produces, and sells automatic test equipment for chip manufacturers. Their upside and downside are very similar to LAM Research Labs. On the upside, they added an industrial atomization segment, which in lines with future growth trends. Regarding value, the current price is $132 with a PE of 31 compared to historical median of 25.3. If we run a price earning growth model, we get a fair value of $90 and a discounted cash flow model will give us a value of $85. So again, this one is also overpriced. Okay, so you say, come on man, picking stock is too much hustle. Is there an ETF which covers the microchip sector? In this case, you can go with ticker sign SOXX which follows the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index which includes all the companies we talked about in this video and more such as Skyworks, Xilinx, Micron, AMD and many others. You'll even get a 0.74% dividend yield. But pay attention, you are paying an expense ratio of 0.46% and that the PE ratio for this ETF is 57. So are we in a microchip bubble? Well, Intel and Qualcomm were just a little bit overvalued. Rest of the stocks we covered are through the roof. Analysts that one year ago were using around average PEs for the valuations are starting to increase the valuations to meet market prices. Everybody's talking about microchip stocks. My neighbor, the cashier at the supermarket, hell, even my old auntie. You're still not convinced? Let me show you just one more thing. Here's the chart of the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index back in 2000. In about two years, prices went up four to five times. Easy Money was finding its way to the market, driving the index way, way higher. Now a quick jump to 2021. Again, in about two to three years, prices are going four to five times higher. Easy money finding its way to the market, driving everything up, and we say goodbye to the 200 days moving average. Check it again. 2000, 2021, 2000, 2021. Bye bye 200 days moving average and see you at the crash. 
If we can learn one thing from history is that history always repeats and bubbles tend to burst. Is it a bubble? Well, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it is a duck. Until next time, stay safe, invest wisely, don't listen to YouTubers. Comment below what are your thoughts about microchip stocks valuations and check out Qualcomm full analysis links in the description below. And say goodbye to my puppy. Ciao!